Well, hi, this is Jasvinder Khalsa for CryptocurrencyInvesting.News and Coinfeeds.com. I've got the pleasure of sitting with Craig Sprouley. Sprout? Sprout. The E is silent. <laughs> uh, with, <laughs> with Crowd Machine. Thanks so much for taking the time to talk to us. Uh, really a pleasure. To, just looking forward to this. So I guess we'll just start at the beginning. Just tell me all about Crowd Machine and, and we'll, we'll just go from there. All right. Well, thanks for taking the time. So Crowd Machine, um, what is it? It's really sort of three parts. Um, We've been working on it for a long period of time. It's in market. Uh, we have some great customers, the likes of you know, Anthem Health and GE and uh, PwC and a bunch of others. Oh yeah. Um, so uh, the product's doing very well. But fundamentally, what it is 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 it's a computer, um, a network-based computer, peer-to-peer, -peer, whereby people, everybody at this conference today, walking around with their cell phones in their pocket, can participate on this computer. Um, and allow their cell phone to take part of an application and process it on behalf of a user somewhere on the planet. Mm. So it means that people can monetize their devices um, running these bits and pieces of apps on those devices regardless mm. of where they are. So that's one aspect of it. There's a lot of technology in that obviously around strong federation principles and, um, and obviously network protocols. But the easiest way to think about us at the end of the day is that we are a a protocol for app execution. Um, so within that computer is actually an embedded development environment. It's called the Crowd App Studio. Um, and it is a true zero code um, application creation platform. The concept of coding has been taken away for um, typical type applications. And as I mentioned, some of those customers, they've built uh, case management solutions, very complex banking systems, IoT uh, platforms, and the list goes on. And they're all created with never actually writing a line of code. Um, and they're created by, because they, we've taken away the concept of coding, they're created by a different or an extended demographic of people. So people that have great ideas that may not have ever learned how to write code can actually use the technology to go and create pretty much anything that they want. So. What it's doing is we're, we're allowing a community to form, um, whereby people anywhere in the world can participate on this network, um, use the, the uh, application creation environment for free, and create apps and then deploy them for production on the network. The other piece of that is a thing called CrowdShare, and the way our tech works is that um, if you've used any application, uh, or think of any application that you may have used, every application exhibits behaviors. For example, an email uh, system, it, it allows you to create an email, allows you to send an email, allows you to save an email, allows you to move an email from one folder to another. Each of those we consider to be behaviours of an application. So the way our technology works is it allows you to assemble behaviours as independent um, pieces of technology and then um, bring those behaviours together to form an app. But what it implies is that you can create a behavior and put it into our CrowdShare and other people can use it. So we have this thing called CrowdShare, it's much like GitHub, but the way it works is that you put something that you've created into CrowdShare, it might be a whole app or it might be just a capability, a behavior, and when, when that thing gets used in anybody else's app and, and anywhere on the network, you get paid. So if you were the developer that created it, you're going to get paid every single time that piece of technology that you created is utilized anywhere on the network. Right? So what we're trying to do are two things. We're decentralizing centralized infrastructure, all right? and we're also making um, the concept of uh, creating an application um, a simpler process so that a much larger demographic of people can actually participate in the process. And hopefully, the altruistic uh, outcome of this is that perhaps people in uh, areas where they haven't had the benefit of a great education, haven't been able to go and do a computer science degree or something of that nature, can now actually participate in the evolving decentralized economy. So we believe that our network will be very successful because of the ability to be able to create applications quickly in it, because at the end of the day, blockchains and everything like that are technologies. What drives the consumption of all these different technologies and networks are applications in the front of users. Right. So the key to rapid proliferation of decentralized apps and rapid proliferation of, of blockchain is the rapid creation of applications to utilize them. Right. And to that end, where blockchain is concerned, 
um, we're blockchain agnostic. So in our technology today, for example, you can work with any blockchain that's out there. Um, if you take Ethereum as an example, you can ingest an Ethereum smart contract into our tech. It'll expose all of the, the methods, the functionality inside that contract to the environment, and then you can quickly assemble extensions of capability to mm. smart contracts. So mm. you might want to create a workflow, or you might want to create um, some UI around a smart contract. Um, you might want to mobilize an interface into the smart contract. You can do all of those things very, very quickly because you're not writing code. In mm. fact, we've got on the minimum side or the lowest side, we have, have uh, about 10 times faster than normal coding practice to achieve a result. And we've got instances where customers have got uh, applications to market 45 times faster than the traditional wow. approach. So wow. huge it's difference. Exciting. Huge yeah. difference. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So that's what we are. Sorry. That's fantastic. Well, well, thank you for that. I mean, something that something that just kind of came to mind as you were as you were getting into it is something that I've been thinking a lot about, just especially t having so many conversations around the expo. Is just, and I don't know if you can comment on this, of course, is the way that. The trend now seems to be, and it, it seems like it's a byproduct of, I guess, the entire site, you know, the, the, the entire philosophy of decentralization is that we don't have these sort of monolithic top down companies covering the entire spectrum of any area. It's more like, um, it seems like there's a lot more potential for people who are hyper specialized, hyper focused on one thing. They don't have to be all things to all people, they can offer. I almost think of it like a, one specific puzzle piece that can connect to many others depending on, again, the application, um, you know, compatibility, and there's there's just less of this, um, you know, like let's say making a computer an entire computer versus versus making, you know, a corner of the keyboard. You know, it, it seems like, I mean, for lack of a better analogy, it seems like that's what we're looking at. You know, just your thoughts on that. Yeah, I, I think that's true. Um, with any emerging technology, you find, like all the vendors here today, they're early into that space and they're creating all of the apps that people will use. But the nice thing about decentralization, I think, is that um, it's breaking that old school mold, right? right. So it's, right. It, is, it is putting those monolithic um, uh, type structures uh, and monopolies at risk. Right. Um, so I do believe that blockchain isn't, at the end of the day, the, the solution to that, but blockchain is a catalyst that's driving the decentralization process. I think so, absolutely. Yeah, it's definitely going to happen. Now, we're at risk um, as the, uh, you know, the, the monopolies were originally um, of having so many different data stores and so many different interfaces that uh, we end up with a fragment, fragmented environment where there's a lot of integration that needs to take place. And that's one of the things that we're trying to address in, in what we're doing. We've created a layer that people can use to build applications, and because it's a consistent layer, then all of these apps fundamentally integrate with one another. Right, so anybody who builds on our infrastructure has the benefit of being able to quickly communicate and integrate with others on the infrastructure. It doesn't preclude them from integrating with others. If somebody's got a RESTful API, for example, they can plug into it in the way you go. But I, I, I tend to agree. I think that you're witnessing the, the birth of a new era where decentralization really is going to be uh, the, the future for us. Um, I think so, yeah. But it's also going to um, need to capitalize on, on uh, not just the app stack, but the infrastructure stack as well. So in other words, the infrastructure, the infrastructure stack that runs the apps today right. has to decentralize to, to power decentralized apps. Right, right, right. yeah. Now, to that, I mean, to, to, well, on that note, I mean, in terms, of, in terms of the kinds of, let's say, challenges or, or the sort of obstacles that you guys are tackling right now, stuff that you're working on, things that are kind of coming up, you know, that, 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 that are really exciting or challenging, what's, I mean, what's, what's, what's kind of going on in that space that you're excited about? Yeah, what's in the roadmap? Um, certainly the crowd computer, the complete decentralization piece. Um, there are a number of other initiatives that we're looking at and working on right now. The way the technology is structured um, allows us for, or allows applications to self-evolve. So in other words, we're not compiling binaries that need to be recompiled or any of that sort of thing. Mm. Um, we're working on machine learning and ultimately we'll get to a point where an application can learn from its environment and if it sees a better way of achieving an outcome, it can dynamically change its behavior at runtime to serve that better outcome. Mm. So 
think of an application as learning from its utilization in the network and changing itself to better serve the outcome for which it was created. So that's something that's pretty exciting in our part of the world that we've been working on for a little while. We're a ways off from getting that out, but certainly the way the architecture is structured today allows us to actually pursue that as a course for our future. So, so that's where we sort of see computing going long term. I, I don't necessarily believe that programmers are going to be programming in 20 years from now. I think programmers are going, or developers are going to be more nurturers. They'll nurture the evolution and guide software, much like a parent guides a child's development today, all right? And there are obviously pros and cons with that, but with the onset of, and the rapid adoption of AI, um, I think you're definitely going to see that as an outcome in the future. Yeah, awesome. So, uh, last question, we're here at the Expo, there's just tons of people under one roof. It's sort of dizzying at, at times, but um, who's, who's here that, that you're really excited about? Oh, I haven't had much of a chance to walk around because I've been speaking to guys like you. Fair enough. Um, but the, <laughs> Guilty as charged. Yeah, the guys yeah. at Spective are doing some pretty cool stuff. Yeah. I, I, uh, you know, I've spoken to those guys. Um, they're in the whole 3D sort of um, animation and uh, video mm. sector in a, mm. in a uh, decentralized way, so that's pretty exciting. Mm. Aside from that, I, ha I really haven't had a chance to catch up with anybody, but there's a lot of stuff here, obviously. Sure it's, it's unbelievable how many sure people are here and what's going on. Yeah, so it's amazing, isn't it? Exciting time. Yeah, it's inspiring. Yeah, it Absolutely. is. It is. Yeah. Lots of creative, creative minds. And yeah, in one place. Is a lot, a lot, I think a lot of good things are going to happen. Well, Craig, thanks so much for your time. Really You're glad welcome. we had a chance to talk. Nice to meet you. Awesome. Thanks. thanks. Bye. Thank you.